Hola, you amazing artist, and welcome! Now, I know it's weird you're looking at me wondering, hey, where's Rafi? Where's Klee? Well, it's quite simple. Rafi and Klee are doing repairs to this wonderful house, and with the holiday season and stuff, they're, uh, yeah, they're pretty busy. They're getting caught up with stuff. But instead of leaving you guys hanging for the next few months, they have hundreds of videos of never before seen footage. I've had the honor of curating all the videos and some of the videos I am going to introduce, some of them I will not, but either way, you're gonna get an influx of Rafi and Klee. The cool thing about this is that as these videos progress, you'll be able to see them move from their old studio to where we are now. Rafi and Klee have really wanted to share these videos with you, and well, apparently this is the best way to do it. So without further ado, let's get this party started. In this video, Rafi and Klee talk about how they started and where they started and how they had nothing when they first started their art career. So. Enjoy Rafi and Klee, yay! Rafi's Rambles, Rafi's Rambles, Rafi's Rambles. When we started, we had like nothing. Nothing. No connections, no prospects. Nothing. Barely we were, any materials. We were in a new town, we didn't know anybody. So uh, we had no materials, barely any materials. The only materials that I had for painting were like these uh, old acrylic paints and like old brushes that I had carried around the country the entire time that we were traveling, so like they were partially dry in the tubes and like they, they was just coagulated and disgusting. But those were the only materials I had. I had no canvas to paint on. Didn't have like a body of work, like a lot of people like to say. You didn't have a body yeah, of work? you didn't have a body of No, I had no body of work. And uh, so we had no money. There was no money saved up. Mm -mm. And we got started anyway. Yeah, I mean, I had a little box of rocks and beads and some natural cording. No idea how to show or talk about jewelry. Yeah, and on top of that, there was the, the terrifying notion of actually putting your work out there. Yeah, that's And talk very... about feeling like you're not prepared. Like a lot of people are like, well, I gotta be prepared to go. It's like, no, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. I've always wanted to be an artist. What is the point of waiting? until the situation is perfect to get started. Yeah. And it's funny because we get a lot of slack about that where people would be like, yeah, well, you know, you got to make stuff before you go and blah, blah, blah. You got to do this before you go. And in my mind, I'm like, no, you just, just get started. Just get started where you are because if you put yourself out there to sell stuff and you don't have any stuff, guess what? You're going to make it a priority to create stuff. The very first time I showed my work, I had like five pieces of jewelry yeah. and it was at a yard sale. I set up a snack tray and the second time I showed my work, I had like eight or 10 pieces of jewelry and I set up a little table at the flea market here and I was utterly terrified to even say hello to anyone. Yep. Yeah. I what, mean, it was scary for me. Yeah, when I started selling my art, I think I had like nothing. I had the, the table set up and I created some sketches and a few things here and there, but there were maybe about three sketches that I did. And then while I was there, um, I painted mm -hmm. and I created stuff. And the first pieces that I created, I did on poster board and found pieces of wood to paint on because I didn't have any canvas. And then little by little, as I could afford to buy some canvas here and there, I started painting on canvas. I didn't wait to get started because the idea wasn't, oh, let me get out there and sell some art. The idea was I got to like let people know that, that I'm an artist. artist. And how else are you going to get that done unless you actually start putting yourself out there. And not only will you take yourself more seriously, not that you need to be like serious about it, but you you make your art creation a priority is when you are actually putting yourself out there. That's when you're gonna learn. That's when you're gonna face those fears. Exactly, you gotta face the fears. And when we say we let things happen organically, when we were at the flea market and you were painting and I was over at my little area making jewelry while we were showing our stuff, the reason that we learned about other art things happening here was because 
people saw what we were doing and said, hey, do you guys know about gallery night? Do you guys know about the Fort Walton art walk? Do you guys know about the Palafox market? Yep. And everything that we discovered was an opportunity we went for. Yeah, yeah, and everything was very organic, but it would not have happened if I was sitting around waiting uh, for things to be perfect to put myself out there. Right, because let's be clear about one thing. No one gave a rip about us on social media. Nope. Not Zero. At all. Not even our family. No, not even our family. Our family didn't even like follow what we were doing on social media. It was putting ourselves out there that caused us to make a lot of the decisions that we made, pointed us in the directions that we went into. I mean, not, not to say that it's um, easy because we also made a lot of mistakes here and there, but mm -hmm. it was all a big fat learning experience. And it wasn't until we actually just put ourselves out there instead of waiting around. A lot of people would be like, well, you know, you gotta blow. I spent the majority of my life avoiding it because I was waiting for the situation to be perfect or I was always waiting. I gotta make sure that I get this done before I do this. And really all I was doing was making excuses and avoiding it. And it wasn't until I actually put myself out there that uh, the, the ball started getting started rolling. Yeah, and the other cool thing that happened was that people started requesting things from you or from me that we'd never done before, and saying yes to those requests forced us to push, explore other avenues. Push outside of our comfort zone. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, so that's that's the secret video, just to give you guys a little insight into our, our very humble beginnings. And you know, every step of it was uncomfortable and scary. Yeah. But also very exciting. Exciting. Exactly. Exactly. So that's it, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed our secret video. Secret video. Uh, I can't do Halloween voice anymore. Yeah, yeah, you can. You can do it year round. Secret video. Yes. Adios, you guys. Goodbye.